The name of this tutorial is Photoshop and Blender 3D 2.63 Part 1 Setup. This is the first in a series of I don't know how many tutorials on how to do 2D image editing with Blender, more specifically with Blender's composite node system. I'm using version 2.63, although in general these tutorials should work with any version of Blender from 2.6 on, and probably with recent 2.5 builds as well. I say perhaps because I haven't tested this tutorial in any version except 2.63. What will be fun about these is that we are going to totally ignore the 3D characteristics of Blender. We're going to use Blender as if it were Photoshop or the GIMP as an image editor. I happen to use the GIMP, but I titled the tutorials Photoshop and Blender because more people, for whatever reason, use Photoshop. After watching these videos, you can then evaluate what part of your image editing workflow actually needs to be in Photoshop or the GIMP, and how much can actually be done in Blender. In part one, we will set up the environment and do some simple image processing. I'm in Blender 2.63. Ignore the default cube. I bet that's never been said in a Blender tutorial. Instead, we will immediately switch to Blender's built-in compositing setup, called, appropriately enough, compositing. The top window, the node editor, is where we'll be spending pretty much all of our time. The bottom area is composed of two windows, a UV image editor, which will be updated as we do our image editing, and a 3D view. The final step is to check the Use Nodes checkbox. This enables rendering using nodes. This is our basic setup, which I'll use in all the Photoshop and Blender tutorials. If you're following along, save the setup. If you've never used nodes before, you might be wondering what happened after you checked the Use Nodes checkbox. It's easy to explain if you press F12 to render. By default, Blender renders the cube in the UV Image Editor window at the bottom left part of the screen. In the Node Editor, each rectangle created in the Node Editor is called a node. An interesting thing happened. The cube was also rendered in the two nodes that were created, and there was some sort of connection line between them. There are actually three different types of nodes, Material, Texture, and Composite. By default, the node editor is in composite mode, processing the default scene, which is called Render Layer. The node editor interface is very similar to the other Blender Windows interfaces. I'll recreate this setup. First, I'll delete the two nodes by pressing the Delete key. Both nodes are selected by default and confirming, exactly as in the 3D window. Now I'll press Shift-A to bring up a menu of the different types of nodes available. Then I'll select Input. Input nodes define the types of input available to the compositor. This particular type of input node is called Render Layers, allowing you to mix different parts of your scene to produce all sorts of interesting effects. The different parts of the scene that you want the compositor to see are controlled by the Render section of the Properties panel, in particular the Layers panel. I'll click on the Layers panel. There are a lot of pieces to the scene that can be selected as input to the compositor, and we won't discuss them here. It's for another whole bunch of videos. However, the, by default, the entire scene goes to the compositor. Now I'll press Shift-A again, and this time select Output and Composite. The Composite node is very simple. It's the final result of whatever you do. There's only one Composite node allowed because there's only one result allowed. I'll left click and drag from the yellow dot representing the input image data to the yellow dot on the composite node representing the image output. Now the rendered cube displays in the composite node. By default, the scene is rendered first normally and then the rendered result is connected to the node on the right called the composite node. We didn't do anything with the cube. We can, however, do a lot of things with it in the compositor. As a simple first example, let's scale the cube by 0.5 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. I'll press Shift A and select Distort and then Scale. I'll connect the render layer image output to the scale node image input. Then I'll click the scale node image output to the composite node image input. Note the direct connection between the render layer node and the composite node has been broken. Instead, the connection is from the Render Layer to the Scale Node, and then from the Scale Node to the Composite Node. So far, there's no effect on the render. I'll press F12 to prove it. 
However, I can control the X scale and the Y scale to control the scaling of the cube. I'll enter 0 0.5 in the X slider and 0.2 in the Y slider. Note how the rendered result immediately updates the scaling. I didn't have to press F12 because the node system updates the rendering automatically. The basic rule is that you do whatever you want to do until you connect to the composite node, which is the result. Now you might be wondering, how does this relate to using Blender as if it were Photoshop? The answer is pretty simple. There's no reason the input has to be anything related to Blender. The input can be any number of things, including an image. I'll select the Render Layers node, right-click, just like in the 3D window, and delete it. Now I'll press Shift-A, Input, and this time I'll choose Image. I'll click Open and choose a JPEG image of me. I'll do anything to make things clear for a Blender tutorial. I've just been Photoshopped in Blender. Maybe the term is Blenderized. In the UV Image Editor, I'll select Image, Save as Image, and Save it to my desktop. F3 would have worked as well. This is just a simple example. Blender's node system has a lot of features. We'll explore these in subsequent tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this introduction. I'll see you in the next tutorials. Happy Blendering!